This video is powered by Keka HR. So when you get an offer letter and it says that your package is 12 lakh rupees per annum. <laughs> and you get excited. But is that amount the same as what comes into your bank account every month? No. The difference between a cost to the company that's CTC, that is 12 lakhs, and what comes into your bank account is called net salary. After all the components and all the deductions, that is what comes into your bank account. And today I'm going to help you understand each component of your total compensation package, your offer letter that you read very, very quickly and don't understand these basic terms. So let's break down the CTC, that's cost to company step by step. First and foremost, what exactly is the CTC? It's actually the amount the organization is willing to spend and invest in an employee. Now it has two components. One is the fixed amount, that's a fixed pay, and the other is a variable component. The variable component could be like a bonus or a commission or some kind of compensation that you will receive based on your performance. Now that is something that you can't predict early on. So for example, maybe your CTC is let's say 12 lakh rupees. Out of that, the fixed cost to the company is let's say 8 lakhs and 4 lakhs is actually the variable pay, which you will get maybe let's say at the end when you complete the first year of employment. Or it could be something like you will get a bonus at the end of the first year if your performance is above a certain benchmark. So your cost to the company will vary between 8 to 12 lakhs depending upon your own performance and how long you decide to stay within that organization. So the cost to the company is always, always all the things that they're going to spend their money on towards you as an employee. It's the entire salary package, including provident fund, medical allowance, house rent allowance, all of this that we're going to talk about now. So CTC usually depends upon the budget of the company, your skills, your qualifications, how many years of experience that you have, which city are you working in, cost of living in that city, demand of your skills in that particular role, etc, etc. Now let's break down the CTC. First and foremost, let's talk about the earnings. And the first component of that is basic salary. The basic salary is usually decided by the company. It varies individual to individual. And I would say it's like the foundation amount of what you end up getting in your bank account. It usually amounts to about 40 to 60% of the CTC. This amount is taxed by the government. It's taxable. So you will have to pay tax on the basic salary. The next type of earning that you have are all the allowances. So you have house rent allowance, you have leave travel allowance, conveyance allowance, special allowance, dearness allowance. There are lots and lots of allowances. Another component of your CTC is the reimbursements that you get, such as any office related trips or bills that you have kept. That's not really an earning. It's just the same as what you have spent, but it's a part of your total pay slip at the end of the month because you're getting reimbursed for the expenses that you have incurred on behalf of the company. Next comes medical allowance. This amount is usually fixed and has an upper limit of 15,000 rupees per annum. A lot of employers give you medical allowances to cover some portion of your medical expenses. Let's say you've been very unwell and you had to purchase some medicines. If you have medical allowance as a part of your offer letter, you will be able to submit those bills to your employer and get reimbursed for those medical expenses. But yes, it is capped at 15,000 rupees per annum. So do check your offer letter and see if you are eligible for medical allowance by your employer. Make sure you're saving all your bills throughout the year so that you can go and reclaim that amount. If you're finding this video useful, please do hit the subscribe button and share this video with a friend who may be a non-commerce student and does not know anything about CTC, net salary, gross salary, etc. This will definitely help them. So all these components totally make up your gross salary. Now gross salary is something that includes your basic salary, all the allowances that you're getting, any variable pay like bonus, etc. that you're eligible for. That also forms a part of your gross salary. And after your gross salary is calculated comes some deductions. Now, of course, there is a difference between cost to the company, then comes your gross salary, and then what we're going to arrive at is the net salary or the enhanced salary that comes into your bank account. So the difference between gross salary and the net salary or the enhanced salary is the deductions. First and foremost is the provident fund. Provident fund is like an investment that is a joint contribution of both the employer as well as the employee. This is statutory, it's mandatory, it's about 12% from the employer side. So the employer will be paying 12% of your basic salary every month as provident fund contribution. And employee is usually matching that as well. So it's basically like a saving for your future without you doing much about it. You will be able to get it either when you retire or you change your job, you can transfer it to the next job and you can keep accumulating this pool until you need it. Next comes gratuity. Now gratuity is like a reward that you get from the company for being loyal to the organization. It is only deducted after you complete five 
five years with the company. The next type of deduction could be any loans and advances that you've taken. Let's say you really needed your salary in advance last month and you spoke to your employer and they said, okay, fine, we'll give you the salary, but we will deduct this much amount from your future salaries for the next six months, for example. So that is a salary in advance and that will also be deducted on your pay slip every single month. You could also maybe wanting to take a loan against your salary and then that will also be deducted at a consensual rate. The next comes the statutory deductions. So some people in specific professions in India have to pay something called profession tax or professional tax. It's not to be paid in every state of India and the amount also varies but the maximum amount is 2500 rupees per annum. Then after this comes all your taxes that you need to pay, your income tax. Now that will be according to the slab rates that have been declared by the government through the budget every year. So in this example if your salary is up to 12 lakh rupees then you have to pay taxes at a slab rate of 20% and that amount of statutory deduction is called TDS which is also shown on your payslip every single month. So the organization or the employer is paying taxes on your behalf in the form of TDS on your payslip to the government every month and at the end of the annual year you will have to fill something called a form 16. You will have to make sure that the total TDS that's coming up on all your payslips in the last 12 months matches with that of the total tax paid as per form 16. So first and foremost you have your cost to the company. If you remove the variable pay, if you don't get a bonus, you deduct that and if you remove employer's contribution to provident fund as well as gratuity, you arrive at the gross salary. After the gross salary, if you remove all the deductions that we just discussed, which is the TDS, the professional tax, etc., then you arrive at your net salary. The net salary is basically after all the deductions including the taxes that you need to pay and the net salary is what comes into your bank account. Understanding your compensation package helps you make an informed career decision. So please my friends go through your job offer in detail before you sign the offer letter. You need to know what exactly is the breakdown of your CTC. You need to know where is your money going, how much you're going to get in hand. Don't get too excited by seeing the big number, the CTC number. Be very realistic and be very sure as to okay I'm going to get X amount of money in my bank account every month. This video was kindly sponsored by Keka. If you're interested in learning more about them and their courses on HR, click on the link in the description below. I'll be back soon with another video but until then keep working hard towards your goals. I hope to see you soon. Bye!